Okay, now for my thoughts on early humanity. Um, there's been a lot of theories that explained as to uh, why there have been these ancient, uh, as to why there have been like ancient pyramids and stuff like that, both uh, both in Egypt and in uh, in South and uh, in Central and South America. Um, one suggestion that was postulated, uh, not counting. Um, not counting, of course, the standard, uh, not counting, of course, the one by Eric von Daniken. Another possibility that someone suggested was that there was actually more international communication and that people, you know, we already know for a fact that at least some of the ancient Greeks um, had postulated that the world was round. Now, the popular belief, now note that not the church, not the church, the popular belief of the time period um, in middle medieval Europe was that the world was flat. And the reason that the popular belief was because of the fact that the bulk of people were uneducated, and the church actually had access to such records, and probably um, Christopher Columbus, who um, did get a probably did get access to such records, figured it out and decided to try to go to India, uh, the long way. But of course, you know, we he forgot about North America. But here's the thing which bugs the crap out of me. Um, there was a Norwegian sailor uh, about back in the late 1980s. Um, what he did was he actually took a uh, design of the old standard reed boats. Um, these would have been the boats that would have gone up and down the Nile back during ancient Egypt. And what he did was he actually built two designs of them. One of which uh, was the reeds going uh, fore and aft. Uh, for those of you who are non-sailors, uh, I used to be a sailor myself. For those of you who are non uh, who are non-sailors, uh, fore is the uh, um, aft is uh, pointing towards the back of the boat. Um, fore and aft, and um, the second, uh, and he sailed this all the way from the coast of Africa, clean through to the coast of South America. A storm nearly destroyed that. Uh, a storm destroyed that boat just as he almost hit the coast, and he had to uh, bail on a life raft to get to shore. So that didn't quite work. But then he later designed one with uh, the reeds going uh, port to star uh, port to starboard. Uh, port is left, starboard is right, and that's only when you're facing the bow of the boat. The bow, of course, is the front. Um, so anyway, uh, okay, just a uh, little sailing terminology. So when I start referring to this for this next bit, you'll get uh, what I'm talking about. Bow is front. The bow is the front of the boat. Stern is the back of the boat. Aft is facing back is facing towards the back of the boat. Port and starboard are the left and right hand sides of the boat. And this is not if you're and uh, and this is not relative compared to which way you are facing. There is a certain front. Like if you're facing backwards and the boat's going forwards, the bow is still always the bow, and you are facing aft. You know, there, this is not you know. And the reason this was brought up, uh, the reason this terminology was brought up, was to avoid confusion for people who are facing different directions on boats. Anyway, uh, long story short. Um, anyway, so this guy, um, this Norwegian sailor, I've forgotten his name now, but um, I've got it listed somewhere. Um, anyway, what he did was he took this second boat and he sailed it, and he was able to, to do a transatlantic crossing in an old Egyptian-designed boat. Um, you know, uh, one of the two designs, straight from, uh, you know, straight from uh, the coast of Morocco clean through to South America. The fact that he was able to do this does uh, suggest something very, very interesting. And that may be that actually there was, um, now, I mean, like we already know that there were certain Irish monks and and, uh, and Vikings who inadvertently hit the coast of North America back during 1000s and stuff like that before Christopher Columbus supposedly discovered the New World. Here's my suspicion. I actually suspect that the uh, the large chunk of the, of the similarities between uh, the ancient, you know, uh, the similar technologies between um, uh, you know Egypt. Uh, you know between Egypt and um, and uh, and what have and South America and what have you, um, were actually because of a large a large amount of communication that we actually give them credit for. And here's the other thing, which is very interesting. And this is where I talk about the origins of science fiction again. Back during um, not the Sumerian era, but a little bit after that, uh, as we know, the ancient Egyptians, the Maya, uh, the ancient Egyptians, the Mayans, and the Chinese were extremely extremely um, good scientists for their early day and age. Um, Prominent examples of this: um, they, the Chinese, discovered gunpowder before the West did. They also got some major discoveries in chemistry uh, long before the West did. Um, uh, the alchemists of the West were primarily determined with trying to translate metal into gold and trying to do, um, you know, and trying to do, uh, um, uh, and trying to do, uh, you know, the philosopher's stone, the elixir of life. What's interesting is the fact that for Chinese, uh, uh, um, for Chinese philosophers. Uh, and the like, their whole the uh, the bulk, the uh, the searching for immortal life, trying to understand how the body works to perpetuate oneself immortally, was actually the was actually the be, um, was actually the central uh, goal of Chinese alchemy. They didn't really have that whole thing about turning lead into gold, so they focused all their energy in trying to design in trying to design this, and they came out with quite a few um, scientific discoveries in the process. Acupuncture for one, um, you know, acupuncture in terms of pain relief for one. Um, 
uh, another one that they came out with, was, uh, you know, and it's been well known that they've come out as well with also some, uh, you know, a large chunk of the herbal remedies which they came out with are now, uh, quite a few of them are now based in medicines today. Um, you know, they also came out with some really good stuff in chemistry. I mean, like, they, you know, pharmacology, chemistry, physiology, like, they were ahead of their time. Gunpowder was another one that they came out with. Uh, the magnetic compass they came up with as well. There were also rumors of certain types of uh, astro astronomical phenomena they figured out. Now, uh, the Mayans uh, came up with one of the best calendars of their time period. Um, you know, they came up with one of the best, uh, you, know, they, 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 you know, they had a solar calendar that was accurate as ours. You know, as accurate as ours. They also had a separate lunar calendar. They had two interjections for those. That's where the whole concept of 2012 came in, was that that was the last year on the Mayan calendar, and that was the same, uh, that was also the last of the 50-year periods of when the solar and the lunar calendars coincided to each other. Now, you know, that, I don't believe in that whole 2012 conspiracy thing. What I do believe is that they were very, very effective at, um, you know, and that was as far as they could predict ahead. Like, you know, that was as far as they could calculate based on the math that they had at the time. You know, they, um, they didn't have calculus available, so they worked with what, with what uh, basic observations they had, and they were able to extrapolate that far out. Now, the thing is, if the human mind, you know, uh, you know even with the most basic of mathematics, you know, if, if comprehended, you know, like basic arithmetic, if they could just simply do observations of that and predict that far out, let's just say that they didn't actually have a capability for some really good science fiction. Here's another one. Um, the uh, another the, uh, a Discovery Channel clip actually showed a design that was uh, that was talked about in hieroglyphics and shown on a pyramid wall, uh, or was it shown on a tomb wall? What they did was uh, someone then later replicated this exact same effect with um, materials that they would have had available. He then put a voltmeter to it and measured a difference of a, an electrical potential of four volts in it. Effectively, the ancient Egyptians had discovered a Leyden jar. Yes, electricity back during you know back during ancient Egyptian time period. Now, the thing is, they probably wouldn't have known what to do with it. They might have been able to figure out, like, oh, this gives a little shock or something like that. And they probably wouldn't, they probably wouldn't have been able to develop much major electricity due to the fact that they're lacking of technological infrastructure. But the point is, though, is that if human inquiry had been freer a lot earlier, we would have been able to, you know, we would have been about three, 4,000 years in advance of where we are now. You know, I, 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 I strongly suspect that we would have, you know, we are just hitting string theory by now. I suspect that if human inquiry had been freer a lot back during that time period, and you know, and if we had actually started, you know, like looking at the tel looking for telescopes and looking for, you know, uh, you know, like actually started like seriously researching a lot of this earlier, we would have been, um, we would, be, we would have been at the point where string theory would have either been proven or disproven by then. And if we have figured out, you know, we would be at the level of where Star Trek, or, or cert, you know, we would be at the rough equivalent of uh, of what Star Trek is supposed to be now. That's where we would be at right now if we had actually had the human free inquiry. So my suspicion is, is that. Um, you know, um, they did get a certain amount of uh, advanced technology early on. You know, um, astronomy, uh, you know, like, I, I suspect that they actually did. And here's where my interesting idea of science fiction comes in. The Bible. You know, we've had fantasy writing uh, bordering on religion for as long as human history can remember. Like, we've got totems and spirit animals and like. But there's one particular passage which I also created, uh, uh, quoted as the possibility for existence of a lie. But the fact that the, uh, the fact that the Bible... Um, the fact that the Bible um, mirrors uh, the fact that the Bible um, mirrors in its description of how animals were created. It first says that the land and the sea were separated. Then plants were first created, sea animals, then land animals, and then people. In that order, you know, it's in six verses. It's a very, very basic description. But how on earth would an ancient person have been able, if they had no references of biology, be able to get that order by coincidence? A, the God exists, and somebody just managed to uh, telepathically communicate with a higher order being. The second possibility, which is the other one I also entertain equally, is the fact that uh, maybe a uh, an ancient person uh, took a look at uh, various species, noticed similar different, noticed uh, some differences between uh, the livestock available at the time, and figured out what uh, you know, figured out how the um, you know how uh, life was created slash evolved. And uh, the and the interesting thing was the fact they said the sun was not created until the fourth day. Now that says to me the fact they said six days, but a time dilation effect. How would they have been able to predict the time dilation effect, or uh, even back during Roman times when the uh, New Testament was written, saying a thousand years about a watch in thy sight, Lord? How would they have been able to figure that out, or that uh, the the, the uh, that you know that uh, evolution or create the creation could have taken a really long time period? Answer: Very good science fiction writing, combined uh, but uh, but from the context of a very very primitive standpoint, so they wouldn't have been able to figure out time dilation. Remember, they didn't have radioactive decay or anything else that we do now. So this way, they would have been able to figure out the fact that evolution took millions of years. 
But, you know, even the very fact they hinted at it, I would say, is either an example of, you know, the existence of God or possible extraterrestrial influence, like they talk about with these uh, various ancient technologies, or uh, I'll explain more in the next video.